Grace to you and peace on this Lord's Day. This is the last Sunday of the liturgical year. Next week, we enter Advent. This week is observed as Christ the King Sunday, and it is a kind of hinge Sunday, as we've been looking at parables concerning the kingdom of heaven. And uh, while at Christmas we celebrate the birth of Christ, today we affirm his ascended majesty, that Christ is already king, enthroned in heaven, surpassing all human authority. And in the weeks between now and Christmas, we will consider the promise and our hope that the kingdom will one day come in its fullness on earth as in heaven. In the meanwhile, this already and not yet, we seek to be people of the kingdom of God. And that is the topic addressed in our readings today. The prophet speaks of God as shepherd and king, paying attention to and responding to the needs of his creation, where fellow creatures have abused them. The Psalms invite us to worship this God who so tenderly cares for us. The Gospel speaks of God's judgment on those who do not make kingdom priorities their life work, and God's blessing on those who do share this heart of God. Finally, the epistle, Paul's letter to Ephesus, is a prayer that our understanding will continue to increase. That is our prayer as we listen to Scripture today. I invite you to pray with me. Holy Spirit, pour out upon us wisdom and understanding, that, being taught by you in Holy Scripture, our hearts and minds may be opened to receive all that leads to life and holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prophet Ezekiel spoke to the people, saying, Hear the word of the Lord. I am the good shepherd, seeking and sorting my flock. Just as human shepherds care for their flocks, so do I. Those who were scattered on dark and gloomy days, I will gather in. Those who've been scattered to the ends of the earth, I will bring back to their pasture. I'll bring them back and feed them on my mountain. They will have good grazing on my mountain, and they will be secure. The land will feed them, and they will be happily content. I am their shepherd, no one else. I'm the one who gives safety. I seek out each lost sheep, every stray, each wounded sheep I heal, the weak I make strong. The selfish and mean will not be tolerated. They will know my justice. Hear the word of the Lord. I will separate the sheep from the goats, and those who ruin the pasture for others will be judged. Those who pollute the streams and the ponds will be judged. Why should my sheep suffer from what you have ruined? Hear the word of the Lord. I will judge between the strong and the weak, because the strong have been vicious running the weaker sheep off excluding them from my pasture land. I will save the exiles. My flock will be secure with me. I see, and I will judge between my sheep. I will give them one shepherd, my servant David. He will see that they are fed and cared for. I will be their God, my servant David, prince among them. So I have decreed, so it will be. Hear the word of the Lord. Both psalm options today are invitations to worship. In Psalm 100, it might be paraphrased this way, Everyone everywhere may sing joyful songs. Everyone everywhere may have a place serving God. So you are invited. Gather before God with your songs. What do you know for certain? Know this, God created us and we belong to God. We are the people of God and God cares for us. Just as a shepherd cares for his sheep, so God cares for us. So you're invited. Gratefully gather before God. Wherever God is, let your praise ring out. Do not be silent, but speak your words of thanksgiving. For the Lord God is good. The love of the Lord endures beyond time. The faithfulness of God will outlast humanity. And our verses from Psalm 95 might be paraphrased this way. It is right to sing praise to the Lord. It's right and good for God's people to be full of joy, for God is our salvation. So we come before God with grateful hearts, 
Our gratitude becomes songs of joy before God. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. For the Lord is a king without peer or rival. The Lord will hold everything in his care-filled hands. The Lord holds the deepest caverns, the highest mountains, the widest seas, the expansive plains. All these God created, and they belong to God. So come and worship. Give proper reverence to the Lord God who made us. The Lord is our God. We are the sheep for whom God provides, the flock he has tended and nourished. So shouldn't we pay attention when the Lord says something to us? In Paul's letter to the Christians in Ephesus, he offers this greeting. Mere words are not enough to express my gratitude for you. Ever since I first learned of the way you trust in the Lord Jesus, the way you love the people of God everywhere, my prayers continually mention you with deep gratitude. It's my prayer for you that our Lord God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, will instruct you so that you grow both in understanding and in wisdom. It's my desire that you comprehend the hope to which we're called, the riches available to all the saints in Christ, and the power of God to work on our behalf. The Lord God put that power on display when he not only raised Christ from the dead, but then elevated him to the place of highest honor and authority at the right hand of the throne of glory. This is so much greater in power and authority than anything we as human beings might try to muster or even imagine, not only now, but forever as the ages roll on. Don't you see? Christ has been made the ruler over all things. Everything is subject to his power and authority. And all this is for the benefit of the church, filled by Christ, and which is the body of Christ. As we turn to the gospel, I'd like to offer you a brief overview of where we have been. When the disciples were standing, awestruck, looking up at the temple, Jesus told them not to be so impressed because it was all going to be knocked down someday. They wanted to know when that would happen. I mean, these were truly massive stones. Herod the Great had done some really impressive work here. So, in the Gospel of Matthew are collected teachings of Jesus on this topic, chapters 24 and 25. First, Jesus told them not to be looking for signs because that day would come suddenly and without warning. Then he told them not to look for a timetable because only the Lord God knew when it would be. No one else, not even the highest ranking angels. And then there are a series of parables that teach us simply to remain ready, diligent, doing our work, because the fulfillment of the kingdom of God on earth as in heaven will happen when we least expect it. Today's parable is the last in that series of parables, telling us what it looks like to be diligent in doing our work. Jesus may have had our reading from Ezekiel in mind as he told this parable. Jesus said, That day will be a day of judgment. The Son of Man, seated at the right hand of the Majesty on high and surrounded by heaven's hosts, will enter his courtroom, and all the nations will come under judgment. It will be like a shepherd who divides his flocks, separating sheep from goats. On the one hand, you have the sheep, and on the other hand, the goats. On the one hand, the king will announce the sentence, Come, enter the kingdom of heaven. It was being prepared for you since time began. You are blessed, because you did my work. You fed me when I was hungry. You quenched my thirst. You brought me into your homes, though you didn't know me. When I lacked clothing or shelter, you met my needs. And when I was sick or in prison, you came to visit. These, the righteous, the blessed, will be amazed, not understanding when or where or how they had done these things for which they were being commended. And the king said, Any time you helped someone that others considered unimportant, you were helping me. To the others, those on the left, he said, Leave my presence. You don't belong here. Your place is with the adversary and those who do his work. You deserve the same punishment because you did not act to help when I was hungry or thirsty. When I was a stranger, you turned me away. 
When I had need, you turned your back. When I was sick or in prison, you didn't do a thing to ease my pain. They too were astonished, not understanding when or where or how they had failed in these ways. And the king said, When you disregarded or despised anyone who was in need, that is how you were treating me. So, those who pay attention to the priorities of the kingdom, caring for the less fortunate, they will inherit eternal life, the life of the kingdom of heaven. There is no place in that kingdom for those who have no concern for its priorities here and now. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's conclude this video with prayer. Sovereign God, we confess that we're not ready for your holy realm. You guide us toward right paths, but we refuse to follow where you lead. You love and feed and care for us, but we fail to love and serve others. Forgive us, merciful God, so that we may return to your fold and rejoice in your presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Lamb upon the throne. Amen. We gather for worship at 9.30 in Urbana and at 11 o'clock in Clarksburg. I hope to see you soon.